Hello, hello everyone. This is Urvi, a software engineer at Microsoft. And I welcome you to the part two of this Python series, where in part one we learned all the basics of Python programming language and Python DSA. In this part, we'll be using the knowledge that we gained in part one to make three different projects in Python that will be beginner to intermediary level projects for you to showcase on your resume and also to check how much of Python you were able to grasp in part one. Before we get started, make sure to check out Scalar's free masterclasses by industry experts on Scalar's event page. The link will be in the description. Let's get started. Starting with our first project. This is a game that most of us have played in our childhood and I still continue to play with my friends whenever we can't decide what to eat or where to go. This is rock, paper, scissors, which has three simple rules. You can either play rock or paper or scissors, where rock basically kills the scissors, scissors cuts the paper and paper covers the rock. So these rules will tell you who of the user wins. Now this game we'll be playing with the computer. So the computer will randomly choose among these three options, rock, paper or scissors, and the user will choose among these three options. And according to the rules of the game, we'll tell whether the computer wins or the user wins. So let's first define our play options using a list. For creating a list, we'll use the square brackets where we can mention what are the different play options we have. Rock, paper and scissors. Now, we want this game to go on in a loop where we'll keep the we'll keep assigning the computer a play out of these three options and we'll keep asking user for a play option and until the user you know decides to quit we can just keep going with the game so since we want this game to go on till a particular condition is met we can use a while loop here and we can keep the condition as true Basically, we are defining that the condition is true. So this loop will keep running. This loop does not have a stop condition here. This loop will keep running until there is a break statement that breaks the loop. Okay. So now, first of all, what we'll do is we'll assign some random play option to the computer. Now that play option has to be random, okay? Among these three options, it has to be completely random every time that this loop runs. For that, for choosing a random option, we have an inbuilt function in Python, which is called random int. Random int. Rand int, sorry. So rand int basically takes two values. It will take two values, for example, a, b, these are these will be integers and it will give me a random integer between a to b. So if I take a and b as 0 and 2. So the first element here is at index 0. The last element here is at index 2, right? So we want any random integer between 0 to 2 and that item from the list we can take as the random play for the computer. But this random int function is not present as is we need to import it in python if you want to use it and this is part of the module random so what we can do is from random we can import rand int so this is how if you want to import a particular module or a library in python and you want to use some function that is present in that module or library. So now we have rand int function with us. How we can use this is we want to decide the random play for the computer. So let's say computer play is equal to what our play options are. Let's put an underscore here. Play options. In this list, which option we take that we can take with the help of rand int function. So we'll say rand int, give me a random integer between 0 to 2. So it will either give me 0 or it will give me 1 or it will give me 2. Every time it will be a random integer out of these and that will decide what will be the play option for the computer. So we got the computer play, let's get the user play. What 
play is the user playing rock paper or scissors for that we just need to take an input from the user so we can just ask the user that you can type rock paper or scissors and whatever the user writes will also convert it to lower case using the lower function again an inbuilt function in python what it does is it will convert any string into lower case okay so in case the user you know puts the rock with r capital it will convert it into lower case so that we can directly compare that string with the play options that we have defined here okay so now we have the computers play we found the play option for computer here we found the play option for the user now we need to decide who wins now who wins that will depend on what are the play options for the user and the computer and to decide who wins we can use the conditional statements that we have started if else if else where we will put conditions and we will check according to the play options who wins now first of all before checking who wins there can be a scenario where it's a tie it's a draw and that happens when both the, the play options for both the user and the computer will be the same so we can just compare and say if the computer's play is equal to the user play that means it's a tie so i can just print here it's a tie if it's not a tie if they both are playing have played different plays in that case we'll need to check now there can be various conditions okay so first let's take according to user play the user could have played rock or could have played scissors or could have played paper so let's first check if the user has played rock if the user has played rock now the computer in this case would not have played rock because if it was the same it would have hit this condition here for if and it would have been a tie if user has played rock the computer would have played either paper or scissors so inside else if again we'll put a condition so th this is known as nested if else when we use if else statements inside another if else statement so inside this else if so inside this else if again we'll check using if condition if the computer has played paper this could be one condition okay some code we'll put here where we'll decide who wins else who wins so if here the computer has not played paper that means the computer has played scissors because rock would not be possible here right and let's mention that here as well if user play is rock then computer played either paper or scissors so if computer plays paper in that case who wins we can print that statement in this case computer wins or we can just say you lose and we can also mention here that what beats what so we can say that the computer play beats user play right because the paper will beat the rock else you win this is the case when user has played rock and computer has played scissors in this case we'll say you win the user play beats computer play So this is one case 
where user has played a wrong there will be two more cases what what would they be if the user has played paper or if the user has played scissors so it would be similar to this else if block that we've implemented here next let's check if the user has played scissors in this case the computer played either paper or it played rock so if the user has played scissors and if the computer has played paper in that case the user wins so let's write here you win and in this case the user play beats the computer play else what is this else for here this else was for scissors and here this else is for rock so if the user has played scissors and the computer has played rock in this case the computer will win so we can say you lose and the computer play beats the user play similarly we'll have another else if block and this is for when the user plays paper so in this case the computer played either rock or scissors okay so here if the if the user has played paper and the computer has played rock what will happen in this case the user will win so again we can say i can just change this here and i can say scissors okay that's easier uh, if the user has played paper if the computer has played scissors so the computer will win so we can print you lose else this is when the computer has played rock and you have played paper in this case you will win all right and do we need a else block here so we've, we've covered the three conditions okay we've covered the three conditions where the user either played rock or paper or scissor do we need an else statement here we can have an else statement where the user has not given input out of these three options okay some random input the user has given it does not match rock paper or scissors okay so in that case we can print not a valid play option try again all right are we good to go let's let's try to run this so the computer asks us rock paper or scissors let's say rock so it's a tie this time it's a tie because the computer might have also chosen rock let's again try rock and the third time it's not a tie i win because the rock beats the scissors so this time the computer chose scissors so it's a random you know the computer will always choose a random option out of these three um let's try something else let's try paper so again i win and if i try something some option which is not a valid play option okay it's just some random thing so it will just say that it's not a valid option so try again so this will keep going in a loop until i actually go and end this okay you can also put another option here in the while loop itself that if the you know the user input is exit or something like that then in that case you can break the while loop or else it will just keep going on because the condition here for while loop we've we've mentioned that it we've hard coded it to be true so this will loop will go on until we have a break statement so this is the rock paper scissors game for you in python make sure to add your own twist additions in the game before you add it to your resume to add your own touch to the game now let's move to the second game which will be a step up from this one which is the tic tac toe game again a game that we all have played during our childhood in our notebooks what happens in tic tac toe is one user will be given x symbol the other user gets the o symbol and basically there is a 3 by 3 grid where you either put an x 
on your chance somewhere or the other user puts a o during their chance and at the end what decides who wins is if you can get three same symbols in a straight line either horizontally or vertically or diagonally then that person wins so this game we'll try to implement this but this time we won't be playing with the computer we'll actually implement this game for two users to play so during one iteration of the loop x user will play and then o user will play and we'll see if anybody wins in the next iteration again x plays o plays and so on so let's start with the implementation now here first of all the 3 by 3 grid that we am talking about we need to create that grid and also we need to print that every time that a user plays so that we can visualize how the game is going so first of all let's create that grid and we don't need to create a grid actually in implementation we can create a list of size 9 okay where the first element will be the rightmost topmost element of the grid and so on so let's start by creating our game uh grid let's call it grid or let's call it just the board for a tic tac toe and initially our board is empty right there there are no elements in it so we'll just create for creating an empty list of size n what you do is um you put just empty string into the square brackets which tells it that it's a list but to create this of size n we do what we do is we multiply by n so in our case n is 9 so this will create a list for us which will have which will be of size n and which will have empty strings now we also want to print this board so that we can visualize how that grid is going and the way that we want to print this is in a grid manner not in a linear way so to print it let's write a function for that okay let's write a function print board where we'll be printing this board list for us in a grid manner so again you can decide how to print this how i would like to print this is in the form of a of a formatted string okay so i want to actually create those lines of the grid and i can do that in in between those lines i can create i can uh, basically mention the item in that list that should be at that particular position okay so i told you how to do that in terms of formatted string right where in inside the string you can mention some variable names in curly brackets and outside of the string you mention f which tells you that it's a formatted string so let me just code this and you'll be able to visualize what i am exactly talking about here so inside these curly brackets i can pass a variable name so i can i'll put board the first element of it which will be at zero index then the next element which will be at first index and then the next element which will be at two index so this will print the the top you know the top row of my grid which will have the first second and third elements of my list and will also print these uh, you know um these lines which will help me visualize the grid in a better way so we have this print statement and we'll have this print statement twice more for the second and the third row just these indexes will change so in the first grid we have zero first second index then we have in the second row we have the third fourth and fifth index and then the last row we have six 7 and 8 index okay let's try to print this let's try to see if we've written the right code 
So this is what is getting printed right now because these this board list is empty, completely empty right now. So it just has empty strings. So nothing is correctly getting printed. But once we have values in this, which can be X and O, that those will get printed in between these lines. Okay, so, so far, so good. We start with the loop that will go on in this game. Okay, because the till till the game is over, and when will the game be over? When it's a, either a tie or it or one of the user wins. So, till the time that happens, we'll keep you know iterating where X user and O user will keep getting chance to put to play put their play. For this loop again, we can use while, and we'll say while true. So this loop will keep running till we till some condition breaks it till we till either it's a break uh, sorry it's a victory or it's a tie now first of all in the beginning of the loop we'll print the board whatever the current board looks like what happens is one of the user will get their play so for that again we'll write a function user play and this function, inside this function, we can pass what user is currently playing. So we have two users, one is X and one is O. Okay, you can have other as well, like whatever name you want to give to the users. But I don't want to write repeated code for X and O because X and O will be doing the same thing, right? Whenever they get a chance to play, they'll be doing the same thing. They'll be choosing where exactly they want to put their X or O symbol. So I don't want to write that code firstly for X and then again for O. So what I can do is I can create a function. I can make use of functions here where inside the function, I'll pass the player icon. I can call it uh, as a parameter. So if X is playing, I'll pass X in the function. So the function will know that, okay, X is playing right now. If I if O is playing, I'll pass O as the parameter. So the function will know that O is playing right now. Okay, so let's create this function now, def user play, where what I pass here is user icon. Okay, which can be either X or O. So whatever the user icon is, first of all, I can tell the user, okay, now it's your chance to play either X or O. So I can print your chance to play. And at the same time, actually, I can also take input from the from the user, right? Or uh, let's do that in the next slide. So you can say user choice is equal to int input. And you can ask the user to enter a number from 1 to 9. Basically, one will stand for, for the topmost position in my grid, topmost, uh, leftmost position. And nine will stand for the last position in my grid, which is the leftmost, bottommost position. So we have the, we've told the user which user's chance it is to play. And we've taken the input from the user. Now at that point, particular position, whatever the user has inputted, we need to put the user icon. Okay, we need to put the user icon in the user choice area. For that, again, we need to check if that place already has an icon. For example, if user chooses to put an X icon where already X is lying or O is like or something else, you cannot put a play there. So we can check before putting the user icon. If board user choice minus one again, because we want to make it zero indexing is equal to empty. If that place is empty, let's put empty here. 
if that place is empty in that case we'll say okay in this place at this index you can put the user icon else else we will have to print that this space is already taken try another So what we did inside this function is, first of all, we tell the user, okay, which user it's chance to play. It's either X is chance to play or it's O is chance to play. And then we ask them for an input from one to nine, which will tell us where in the board or the grid we need to put your user icon. Now, before putting the user icon, we'll check if that space is actually empty. If the choice space is empty or not if it is empty that means it is an empty string only then we'll put the user icon there or else we'll 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 just print that the this space is already taken okay so now comes to calling this function first of all we printed the board in our while loop this is our start playing here So first of all, let's give a chance to X. Okay, so for example, X runs first, sorry, plays first. Now, after X has played, we can print the board once again. So to see that, okay, this is what X has played. And when X has played, after that, two things can happen. Either X wins or it's a tie or nothing happens in that case we'll just go ahead with O's chance, with the other player's chance. So three things that can happen. Okay, number one, X wins. Number two, what can happen is, it's a tie. And number three thing that can happen is, no one wins, yeah, nothing happens. Nothing happens, in this case, next player plays your yeah, next user plays other user plays okay so three things that can happen first of all x wins now again we need to check if at this point in the sprint uh, in the in the tic tac toe board is x winning or not how do I check that? Let's create a function for that, for checking that. Is victory, is victory function, where again, we want to write one function that we'll be able to use for X and we'll be able to use the same function for O as well. So we pass the user icon as a parameter here and inside the function, we'll have to check now if we have a sequence of three icons in the same line, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. In that case, that user icon will win. And for that, we'll actually have to write those conditions um, eight times. So what would be the condition one? So condition one, when X can win or the user, any user icon can win, if in the topmost row, all of the icons or all of the uh, items match the user icon. So I can say if board zero is equal to user icon and board one is equal to user icon and board two is equal to user icon. That means in the topmost row, all of the icons or all of the option uh, all of the items match the user icon so that means whatever this current user icon is that player has won so this is but one condition there can be multiple conditions here the other condition what could that be the other condition would be if they were if the second row if, if in the second row, the user has all their plays. So again, here we had 0, 1, 2. We'll have 
three, four, and five indexes. We'll check for three, four, and five indexes. And for the last row, we'll check at index six, seven, and eight. Right, so this is basically checking in the first row. This is us checking in the second row. This is us checking in the third row. This is checking horizontally. It can also be vertically that they have a sequence of the same icon in three places. So for checking vertically, we'll have I at index zero, three, and six. Or at index one, four, and seven. Or we can have at index two, <coughs> five, and eight. So here we're checking for the first column, then the second column, and then the third column. And we'll have two more conditions for the diagonal. So for the diagonal, we have zero, and then four, and eight. Zero, four, eight. So that means this diagonal. Or our last condition, The other diagonal, which will be two, four, and six. So all in all, we have eight conditions in which a particular user can win. And all of these eight conditions, we can check in one if condition in one if statement only how using and and or logical operators so here we've used and operator because we want all these three conditions to be true this means that a particular row all has the same user icon but all these different eight conditions that we've mentioned here, all of these do not need to be true. Any one of them, if it's true, then we want the if code to get executed. So here with these conditions, we have used the or logical operator, okay? Try to remember, I told you and is used when we want all of the conditions to be true. Then only and gives true. Try to remember, I told you AND operator we use when we want all of the conditions to be true. So AND operator, if you are using with multiple conditions, it will give true only when all conditions give true, are true, else it will give false. OR operator, however, will give true if even one of the multiple conditions is true. If all, only if all of the conditions are false, it will return false. Okay, so we've used in this if condition, this big if condition, we've used both of the operators and an or. So this is, should really help you understand where and how we use these two operators. Again, and we are using here because we want all these three things to be true. We want all these three spaces to have the user icon. And we've used or here because we want either of these eight conditions to be true. If even one of these eight conditions is true, that means the user icon wins. So here we can print, we can print who wins. We can mention the user icon and we can say is the winner. Else, we can just say that no one uh, no one win right, wins right now or we can just leave it as B. We can also check this here in the main function, in the main code where we're playing. So let's do this. Let's return a true or false value here, okay? 
So this function will return a Boolean value. If the user icon wins, it will return true. Else, else it will return false. Okay, so we'll just check here. We'll just check here. We had a condition here, either x wins. So we'll check if is victory x if x wins in that case we can print x wins and we can break our loop break our by loop we don't need to go any further else if else if my what we'll have is it's a if it's a tie if it's a draw okay so else if is draw and how do we how do i check draw again let's write a function for that here separately so it'll have a nice cleaner code if is draw we can say it's a draw when there's no empty space in the board left so we can check that if empty not in board what this not in operator does is this basically checks if this value is not present in this list okay if this value is not present in this list that means all of the you know places in our board have been filled up so we can say it's a it's 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 a draw we can return true here else will return false so again we check here if it's a draw we'll print it's a draw or a tie whatever and we'll break our while loop we don't need to go any further so this is the second condition third was nothing happens and then the other user plays so in this case again we'll have the user play for the other user which is o we'll print the board and again these three conditions can happen for o either o wins or it's a draw or nothing happens so we'll check again either o wins we'll check if is victory and we can use the same function here so we don't need to write the same piece of code again if is victory for o we'll print o wins and we'll break the while loop either it's a tie or a draw so that we can check using else if statement if is draw then again we can print it's a draw and we can break if it is if this does not happen that means nothing has happened we want x to play the next chance so again this y loop will continue playing again the x will play we'll check the three conditions o will play and this will go on till either one of the user wins or it's a draw let's try running this now so x plays let x play at one and we can see in the next chance where x icon is played for o let's say at four let's x play at five and o at let's say seven and again x let them play at nine so here x has all three icons in a diagonal so, sorry the same icon in a diagonal so x wins okay you can try again um let's say for 
I'll just try randomly and let's see if this gets a draw for us. We want to get a draw. Uh, Ulfi, same line, can you do again? Let me try again to see if we can have a draw. And eight and nine. Okay, in this case, X wins, but you get the idea. So you can try this with your friends, play this game and uh, Again, add, try to add your own touches, your own additions to the game. See how we can make the code better. Is there some way through which we do not have to define these eight conditions and maybe a more optimized way to do this. So do try to think about that and that's how you'll slowly, you know, get to learn coding yourself and probably make better projects as well. So this was the tic-tac-toe game for you in Python. Moving to our last project, which is a typing test. So most of us have taken typing tests to know what is our typing speed, which basically tells us what are the words per minute you can type. And here I have I ha already have something, I've created a list of some sentences that we can, you know, randomly give to the user to type and we can, we will we'll be able to check what time it takes for the user to type this. We'll see if the user has typed the right sentence, the exact sentence that was, that they were expected to. And if they have, then we'll calculate the time they took. We'll divide it by the words in the sentence and we'll get the words per minute for the user. All right, so let's let's start implementing this. Um, first of all, again, this is not a like a, an iterative game, so we don't need to do this regularly. What we can do is just like once we can uh, run this program, which will first of all give the user a sentence to type. Okay, so. First of all, we'll print get ready to type this sentence. Get ready to type this sentence and we'll again, we'll, we'll try to pick a random sentence. Okay, at this point, we know how to pick a random element from a list, right? We've already done that in the rock, paper, scissors game. So we'll print a random sentence and uh, how do we do that? We use the rand int function for that. So first of all, let's import that from random import rand int. So this will give us the rand int function and to get a random item from the sentences list. Okay, this is a list, right? On in which I have these strings. So in this, I will say sentences random give me a random int from index 0 to 4 because this has 0 to 4 these uh, items go from 0 to 4 index so this will give me a random integer between 0 to 4 and that will decide me the sentence that I'll give to the user so I'll print this sentence to tell the user what exactly the user needs to write now I can straight away take the input from the user or I can give a few seconds to the user to get ready to type that sentence, okay? And there's an interesting way to do that and we can do that and actually also keep track of time using the time module in Python. So this time module in Python uh, has a lot of inbuilt function. One of those function is delay. What delay does is it basically, if you want to have a delay of a second or any number of X number of seconds in our code, we can use this function. We can mention the number of seconds by which we want to delay. So for that, we can import the time module. So this time module will have a number of functions uh, for us, one of those function is the sleep function where we can mention the number of seconds for which we want, uh, you know, the program to get delayed by. So if I write here time dot sleep one, so the next, you know, line, whatever I write here will get delayed. The execution of that line of code will get delayed by one second. 
So if I say here, if I've already printed the sentence, after that I can have a timer of three, two, one, go. You know, just so that the user gets ready to type the sentence that we have given to the user. We can print here, we can print a in three and again we'll put a delay of one second and we'll say two and again a delay of one second and lastly we'll say one go okay let's try to run this let's see how this works okay so let me start a new terminal so it says in three two one go so you can actually see the delay in these pieces or uh, th these line of codes getting printed right and we are able to do that using the sleep function now i don't want these three print statements to print in three different lines okay so I told you how to avoid that by just saying that end we can just mention what we want the end operator to be in our print function if you mention this as a okay in the last thing lastly we don't want but by default in print function the end character is a next line character if you don't want that we can just mention it that we we want an empty string as the end character so running again i have the sentence here three two one and go so i have a timer to give a sort of a uh, you know time to the user to get ready to start typing and now we can take the input from the user now before taking the input from the user we'll start we will we'll basically get the current time and after the user has given the input so start time we can get by time dot time this will basically give us the current time in seconds and now we get the in user input so user input is equal to input and uh, since we've already written here get ready to type the sentence i don't think we need to mention another thing here we just take the input from the user and after that we take the end time as again time dot time so we have the start time the end time now before actually calculating the speed the words per minute let's also verify that the input that the user has given matches the sentence that the user was supposed to type so we'll just check if the user input is equal to the sentence in that case we'll calculate the words per minute speed else we'll just print the input does not match the sentence try again all right now it boils down to calculating the words per minute speed and let's write a function for that calculate calculate words per minute where we'll we'll give the time that it was taken to write the sentence and we'll give the words in that sentence after that calculating wpm is just words divided by time but also the time we need to con this is in seconds right now so we can we need to convert it to minutes so let's say minutes is equal to time divided by 60 and we'll divide by minutes here and return the WPM at the end. Okay, so this is a function. What it does is it will take in the time to write the sentence. It will take the words in that sentence, number of words, and it will calculate the words per minute. So for calling this function, 
let's say calculate WPN and the time taken would be end time minus the start time that would be the total time taken for the input that the user has given and for calculating the number of words in the sentence okay let's see how we can do that um, number of words in the sentence we can calculate this by using the split function the split function it's also telling us here what it does is it will return a list of the substrings in the string using separator as the separator string so basically inside the split function we can mention a separator string and the split function will split this entire sentence or a string into substrings based on the separator that we pass so by default this split function will take white space or blank space as the separator so basically wherever it will get in the sentence wherever it will see a white space it will take this as a separator and uh, divide that string on the basis of that separator into substrings and this will return me a list of those substrings now i can just calculate the length of that list that will give me the number of words in that particular sentence okay so we'll pass these words inside our function and we should get the typing speed wpm and we'll just print your typing speed is whatever we get from the function whatever is returned from the function okay let's try to do this should we try to run this so three two one to be or not to be that is the question so it gives me your typing speed is this much okay and uh, for example if i run this and i do not give the input that the function is expecting the program is expecting for example i write something else so it will just say that the input does not match the sentence and you'll just have to try again till you put in the right sentence that it is expecting only then it will calculate the typing speed for you so do write this program do try to find out what is your typing speed you can change these sentences here i've chosen random sentences you can have you know even more difficult or bigger sentences and try it with your friends see what their typing speed is what yours is and uh, just try to add your own optimizations and additions to this program to this game that will be really good for your resume we'll try to add these uh the links to these programs in the link uh, you can refer to the code uh, but again do not try to copy the same code uh, try to implement it try to understand the code and implement it yourself that will go very good with your learning and will help in your learning in the long journey thank you so much for watching this video i hope you were able to understand implement all these three projects and all the best for your future learning do let us know what all other topics you want us to cover in python programming language thank you and bye